This is pretty interesting. The Players Tribune, Steve Francis. The cover was, I got a story to tell. By the way, great, great photo to go with. Yes. Amazing graphic designer, photographer, great photo to go with. By Sam Miller in the Players Tribune, so shout out to Sam. Real quick, how he starts this off is maybe one of the best ways to start off an article. I remember the exact moment when I realized NBA legends weren't mm -hmm. <laughs> Who says that <laughs> about fellow NBA legends? Who possibly says that? Well, Steve Francis. Thank you very much. So here's what he wrote. Four years before I was on that plane with Hakeem Olajuwon telling me we're going shopping for cashmere suits, I was on the corner, next one, of Maple Ave in Tacoma Park, Maryland, selling drugs. My mother had passed away, father was in the pen, 18 people living in an apartment, dropped out of high school, no GED. This is 1995. I'm standing on the corner all day building my little drug empire, just trying not to get robbed, and then at night I'm playing pickup ball. I'm not glorifying, I'm not trying to glorify, rather, uh, dealing drugs, but you gotta understand where I come from, and when I grew up in DC in the 80s, during the crack epi uh, epidemic, don't ever call it the crack era, it was an epidemic. Crack devastated our entire community, it was like a plague, man. I watched it, I lived it, I sold it. So what did he do? Well, he was what we what he called uh, a, what was it, a phone boy, where he stood and waited for the phone to ring for people who wanted drugs and girls. And while there, what did he do, if we can go back for a second, he worked on his game at a young age. He worked on his jumper, he worked it on his handles. When he worked there, he was dribbling, he was shooting, he was doing everything that he could. Now on top of that, he said, I got robbed a million times, I got my ass beat a million times, I saw drive-bys. If you ask me what really scared me, it was the drugs, the needles, the pipes, the PCP, people slumped over with that look in their eyes, it was everywhere, even the mayor. So on top of that, what he did was he went away from that. Even though his mother passed away, his grandmother gave him $400 for a plane ticket and got him to this junior college, which is San Jacinto, I believe, in Texas. He went on to say, I'm telling you how it's gonna go, or his, his uh, AAU coach. 10 years from now, you're gonna see the same people, they're all gonna die, they're gonna be wearing filas, it's gonna be the same over and over and over again, still getting robbed. You could do something different. And then, of course, he did. He went to Maryland, he transferred from Texas. At 18, he said, I'm selling baggies. 22, I'm getting drafted. Guess where the draft was held? Washington, D.C. How do you explain that? He went on to have a great nine year career and is still one of the most underappreciated superstars of his time. Yeah, I agree. Um, as far as like, you know, him being a, a superstar. What's really great about this story, and I feel like something that the NBA, the league, and just sports overall need is just the honesty that comes with that. You're right, that opening line is so raw and so strong. <laughs> You know, so but, different, but it needs it's it's a line that's very necessary. These veterans and and every every sport too. There's there's so many things that veterans go through, right? Like that's mm -hmm. what you aspire to be. Like you want to just like be remembered as one of the greats. Make sure that your legacy is left with something great to be remembered by, right? But never do you take into account everything that comes with being a veteran, right? And everything, all the steps you had to take and all the abuse you had to go through and both physical and mental and spiritual in some cases, um, you had to go to go through and undergo just to get to like this prestigious, you know, legacy veteran um, group, right? And, and he was very honest about it. Like he, now that he's experienced and he knows what it is to be a veteran and mm -hmm. what it is to have gone through everything that he did, was it worth it? Absolutely. You know, his life turned, mm -hmm. you know, 180. Um, but man, to, I, I read really deep into it and, and the whole like, you know, he was selling drugs and the, the alcohol that, that he was, it was getting mistaken by, the stories that, you know, a lot of, media outlets twisted about him, kind of tarnished his career or, or totally. attempted, attempted to at least. Um, because to, in my eyes and in your eyes yourself, like, you know, he's still a superstar. Like he still provided a lot to what the league needed. He was great. Um, but it's just really unfortunate because the problems that, that stemmed from when he was growing up kind of carried on into his career and adult life, and then something that he had never done. He was just associated with crack, 
Yeah. It's something he was being accused of doing. And keep in mind, we never take into account that these guys have families. Like he was so he was more concerned about his mom reading this, his kids reading this, and and you know, then how they would view him after that, mm-hmm. when really he was going through he was battling through an alcoholism. Yes. And not to say that one is is worse than the other, but it's just the, the narrative completely changes from oh you know this guy's doing crack to this guy's going through you know he, he's an alcoholic sure if we could show to speak volumes and go a bit further from Denise's point if we could show the cover of the players tribune this is also almost microcosmic of how people feel about their fellow stars that they see in an arena in a stadium what have you they're judging a book by its cover right when you, when, when, not you per se, but when uh, during his playing days and afterwards, when they look at somebody like Steve Francis who has not aged well, they immediately make the joke or not, oh, he did crack. Right. Oh, he did too much coke. Oh, he was doing heroin. Like, Especially if he was near it. Like, it's just so easy to, to make the story that that's what he was doing. Right. But it, it's also so strong to not judge a book by its cover. You peel back the curtain of a person's life. And you realize, holy crap, Steve Francis went through way more than I would ever go through as a right. basketball fan or someone reading it. Oh, he goes, he went through way more than I could even fathom. This was tough on him. Right. So what did he do to make up for it? Sometimes if he had a bad game, I would have to think that he would drink. And then as you said, it turned into alcohol abuse. He even wrote about it a little bit later that right. he was heavily drinking. It didn't have to do with drugs, It did, even though I personally view alcohol as a drug. Um, It didn't have to do with crack, cocaine, it didn't have to do with anything like that. It was just that he was drinking over and over and over again. And it's just somewhat, it's somewhat shallow and also selfish to just jump to a conclusion like that instead of anybody doing their due diligence. And that's what I'm trying to do with this new form of content on the channel, which is uh, just giving the backstory. Providing a little bit more than people would actually know about right. their stars and their athletes. Give the know. right insight. Don't just make an assumption just based off of, of one fact. And the fact mm-hmm. was that he was connected to crack early on before his career had even started, mm-hmm. before he was even like in college or, or, or high school. Yes. He just did it to make a living and, and to, to get by. And he totally. didn't even do the crack. He was just using it, as he said, to bring in income. Here's what I'll say. I would not be surprised at all if this now turned into a 30 for 30 or a documentary right. because this is going viral and rightfully so. So kudos to Steve Francis. Let us know your thoughts, youtube.com slash TYT Sports. We'll see you next time.